Arguello, the conquistador, the, the, the hero figure. There was a person that embodied the whole idea of the sweet science. It was Alexis Arguello. Alexis Arguello is one of the most gracious people in or out of the ring. Demons run when a good man goes to war. Easily the finest pugilistic product of the country of Nicaragua, Alexis Arguello grew up poor in the capital city of Managua. It was a squalid existence of poverty and despair. He immigrates to Canada at 14. A skinny stranger in a strange land, he refused to be picked on in his new home. He didn't look for trouble, but was always ready if trouble came looking for him. When his sister marries a boxer, he pulls Alexis Arguello off the streets and puts him into the gym. Outside the ring, Alexis Arguello was a dignitary, always a beaming smile on his face with a kind word for all he met. Inside the ring, Alexis was the featherweight slender man, standing five foot 10 inches, fighting at 126 pounds Alexis had height and reach in almost every fight. His jab alone was hard to get inside of. Behind it was one of the most complete offensive toolkits in history. His ring craft was masterful. What truly set him apart was a straight right hand like a bolt action rifle. It earned him an appropriate nickname. Arguello returned to Managua to begin his career at age 16. After some early stumbles, Alexis finds his feet in the fight game, starts finding the chins of his shorter opponents. When he hit people, they stayed hit. Soon, he was introduced to Eddie Futch. He saw Arguello calmly, dispassionately detonating jaw after jaw, and Eddie thought, I can work with this. Eddie teaches him the Tao of the Tall Man. Arguello makes his American debut after earning a crack at Mexican legend Ruben Olivares. 69 opponents. Arguello pressured the shorter man. Olivares was cagey, would stick and move and stay off the line of attack, jab his way in and body punch on the way out. When Arguello couldn't find the right hand, he opened up his game, backing off and catching Oliveira's on check hooks as he stepped. It was round 13 when each man threw a hook. Oliveras threw a wide one. Alexis threw a tight one. Oliveras hit the deck. Alexis spots his target between the gloves and pulls the trigger. It was a war history has been kind to. Each man has since been voted in the top 20 hardest punchers of all time. He lined up his shots and one by one cleared out 126 pounds. Arguello grows into his prime and with nobody left to fight, he makes the jump to 130 and delivers one of the marquee performances of his career against Alfredo Escalera. 28th championship fight and he's referee. Okay. The fight took place in Alfredo's native Puerto Rico. The fight, known to boxing fans as the Bloody Battle of Bayamon, began under a driving, apocalyptic rain. Produce blood. Proud is the 
Escalera fought his heart out for the Puerto Rican fans, but every punch Arguello landed broke or cut something. Escalera was bleeding out of half a dozen wounds. His nose was shattered. His ear was torn. He'd lost a tooth. Alfredo was saved against his will by a merciful doctor in the 13th round. Arguello was peaking. And it's a technical knockout for Alexis Arguello. He becomes the junior lightweight champion of the world. A tough, grueling, often brutal fight with some shifting time. There's no better display of his blend of boxing skill than his first title defense. He was faced with contender Ray Tam of Korea. This destruction was a clear case of levels. As Arguello utterly outclassed him. Beautiful mixing up the punches by the champion. Look at that beautiful work. Let's get there and then start throwing uh, combinations of the ticket. Like that! It took just five rounds to convince Ray he'd had enough. And remember that Tan took his Arguello's best shots through the first four rounds. Just look at the accuracy. Arguello found himself in a loud and dangerous division. 130 pounds at this time was full of action heroes. One by one, Arguello respectfully, patiently stalked them and put them down until once more Arguello relinquishes his title to chase a larger champion. He's welcomed to lightweight by Southpaw slugger Cornelius Boza Edwards. Arguello was unbothered by fighting a lefty. To Arguello, it just meant the lane was open for his lead right hand. Even at his new weight class, Slenderman could eat a punch. Round four that saw the slugfest break out. Arguello broke through in the seventh with amazing work. The eighth and final round looked more like a back alley debt collection than a professional fight. Arguello landed crushing shots on the bigger man, who stood to take them far too long for comfort. Soon, Arguello was reigning over his historic third weight class. TKO Alexis Arguello! Arguello! Arguello's first defense came up against a star on the rise. Ray Mancini was his father's son. His dad Lenny was a top contender in the 40s when the war broke out. Just shy of his title shot, Lenny was drafted and ended up taking German shrapnel that cut his championship ambitions short. His son was 20 and 0, challenging to win the championship he never could. Ray was scrappy and tough, fast and determined, but there was nothing he could do about the length and poise of Alexis Arguello. Tim, the big difference is, I, I believe with one punch that Aguayo can do a lot more damage. You, you could be winning a rally and then all of a sudden find yourself on your face. Time and again, Mancini would charge face first onto those check hooks that paralyzed Ruben Oliveira's all those years and weeks ago. But it was a right hand that put the nail in the coffin. Impressed by the heart of the young man, Arguello told the world Mancini would be a champion. Mancini would prove him right. Ray Mancini, I love you, father. This is the most beautiful thing you have, like I have my father. Take good care of you, you're gonna be a 
good, good promise. And I promise if I can do something for you, let me know, please. Thank you. Okay. His final defense at 135 came against Hawaiian Southpaw slugger Andrew Gannigan. Something very unusual happened. Alexis Arguello made a mistake. Andy steps in with his left to the body. Arguello retreats straight back, bouncing off the ropes and into Gannigan's left hand. Arguello stood but couldn't play off the power. Thanks to his graceful defense, he survives the round. Gannigan cannot get through the defense. We're in the final seconds of round one. To return the favor in round three. The big right hand. Gannigan picked it up well. Oh, he knocks him down with a solid right hand. Solid right hand. Time and again, Gannigan tries to close the gap until the cracks started to show. It took a vicious pair of body punches to finally put him away. The champion knocks him down at the bell. A fifth round knockout at the bell by the champion Alexis Arguello. I thought I, you know, I had a chance to finish him off, but uh, I was wrong. He's a great champion. Uh, I think from now on we're going to fight in a. Uh, and Junior Welterweight. 140 pounds. If you won that championship, you would be the only man ever to win titles in four different weight divisions. You want that, don't you? Alexis repeated his pattern of relinquishing his title before rising in weight. WBA Junior Welterweight title. If he can win that, he will be the first man in boxing history to win titles in four different weight divisions. This time, Kevin Rooney did the honor of welcoming him to 140 pounds. Rooney was taught the peekaboo style by Cus D'Amato and would later go on to train Mike Tyson. Arguello was hitting Rooney with precision punches. He's not moving side to side. I, I think he's going to try to outpunch Arguello, which to me would be a fatal mistake. With the announcer openly wondering if Alexis still had the same power at this weight, Alexis times a jab, answers as if on cue. Power and effectiveness at 140. He has landed some big punches already this round, Tim. He could definitely still punch at 140. And so Alexis had earned his right to challenge for the championship of his fourth weight class. Aaron, prior we had a chance to say hello to him the other night. Aaron, uh, it looks like this is this fight is going to happen. I, I'm sure you're excited about it. Yes, I'm very excited. I came up here and I saw a great fight and enjoyed it because uh, I learned some. I learned that the man can punch. But that, my friends, is another story for another time. <laughs>